Okay, I want to talk about seven golden formulas. Uh, each one of these will guide our thinking as x-ray techs and will help us in a lot of the technical considerations. So even though we're going to be working with these in a fairly abstract format, uh, many of these considerations uh, are there for us every day as we're working clinically as x-ray techs. So the first is just mass, which is a formula. It's an expression of MA. I'm just going to write it in parentheses times time in seconds, and it's going to equal mass. Now, just with some basic algebra, we can also see that there are two other ways we can consider this information here. So the first is if I'm given mass and a time in seconds, I can solve for MA. And we will use this in all these different ways. Also, if I'm given mass and MA, I can solve for time in seconds. So all of these are going to be useful ways to, to employ this, this first formula. The second formula is really more um, best thought of as a, as a logic statement or maybe an algorithm. And it's the 15% rule, which deals with KVP. So 15% increase in KVP equals 2 times mass. So if this is true, and this is where a lot of students trip up, if this is true, then it's also true to say if we increase the KVP by 15%, then if we want to maintain the same exposure, we need to divide the mass in half to maintain exposure. So just two different ways of thinking about basically the same thing, how significantly KVP changes exposure at the image receptor. Now another thing that significantly changes intensity or exposure at the image receptor is the distance from the source, particularly a point source of radiation. So we express that as intensity 1 over intensity 2, and this is the inverse square law. So we put the distance 2 squared on top and distance 1 squared on the bottom. This is why it's inverse. So as density decreases, we would expect intensity to increase exponentially because it's an inverse relationship and it's guided by an exponent. So if that is true, then as X-ray text, the primary way that we think about this, so this way expressed here, a lot of times guides considerations of uh, radiation safety, how to decrease dose by maximizing distance from a source of radiation. The way that we tend to think about it as X-ray text and when we're thinking about patient imaging is more as an, an expression of mass. So this is the direct square law. Because of this change in intensity, we need to maintain mass. So mass 1 over mass 2, and this is a direct proportion. So we've got distance 1 squared over distance 2 squared. So because of this change in intensity up here, where it's inverse, we need to increase or decrease mass. So if the distance decreases, we would expect mass to decrease. If the distance increases, we would need to increase the mass. And again, it will be an exponential change. Okay, grid conversion factors are sometimes also called Bucky factors. And these are factors. They're dimensionless things. So um, they're a way of guiding changes in technique if we use a grid. Grids are used to clean up contrast and get rid of scatter radiation. In all likelihood, they will go away in the next five, ten years, and we will use software algorithms to correct for scatter on the image. But for right now, we're using grids to clean up. And uh, if we're not using a grid, then we'll have a Bucky factor of one. And this is generally the way that I break this down, because uh, I'll show you. This comes uh, from Stuart Bouchong's book. So if I'm using a five by one grid, the grid factor I need to use is a two. An eight by one grid, I would use a Bucky factor of uh, three or four. A uh, 12 by 1 grid, a Bucky factor of 5, and a 16 by 1 grid would require an in increase of mass by about 6 times, right? So this is a huge thing. Um, the way that I memorize this little table here is that um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So um, I just plug and play with these numbers here. And the way that this is generally can be thought of if, if we're changing um, technique as we're using, for, say for example, we did a, an exam without a grid and it, and it didn't look very good in terms of contrast. We need to use a grid. Here's the way we would calculate um, given that. So we've got the new technique, the one that we're going to need over the old Bucky factor times that old mass. This will be the old mass or mass 1 maybe and that will give us the new mass for whatever we're using. So say for example, 
we uh, image the patient without a grid, right? Picture looks crummy. So we need to use a grid. We know what the mass was. We're going to use a 5 by 1 grid. We'll put the 5 by 1, we'll put the 2 on top, put the 1 on the bottom, multiply 2 times the old mass to give us the new mass. So basically the new mass will be 2 times what the old mass was. This can also be used to say we didn't need a grid. We, we shot a knee x-ray. We really didn't need to use a grid. Um, we want to take the grid off. We used a 5 by 1 grid again. Um, we could put, again, the, the new situation would be a 1 up on top because we're not using a grid over the 1 over the 2. The old mass could be, then be divided in half to give us the new mass. So you can see where grid usage does help with contrast but also significantly increases patient dose. Okay, the final set of uh, formula, it's going to be important to have in the back of our mind uh, some relationships that are geometrical in nature. Um, so I want to draw these out here for us. So we've got a point source of radiation that's uh, emanating x-rays in a divergent pattern, right? And uh, we, they're picking them up on some kind of image receptor down here. So, um, and let's say our patient is right here. I'm going to draw a really crummy picture of a patient. So we've got a, a series of uh, distances here. The first I'll call SID, right? That's the source to image receptor distance, right? But then we also have a SAW, that's a source to object distance, source to the object being imaged, in this case the patient, and what I will call an OID, an object to image receptor distance. These geometrical relationships are going to be important. They will influence things like both magnification and unsharpness. So um, the first one that we'll look at will be uh, magnification, which I just remember is SID over SOD. SID over SOD. Um, if I want to figure out what an image size is, I know that it will always be larger than the object size. There is no way to minimize a um, object size on an image. It will always be larger. There will always be some amount of magnification on every x-ray that we ever do. Now, as you can see, there's also a um, algebraic relationship here um, in the way that I've, I've set it up here. It's apparent. Um, SID basically equals SOD plus OID, right? So we can further see that SOD, if we, if we want to figure out what the SOD is, we need to take the SID and subtract out the OID. If we want to figure out what the uh, OID is, we need to take the SID again and subtract out the SOD. This will be helpful for us. Um, particularly when we're looking at things like unsharpness. Now unsharpness, also called penumbra, and it's a measurable thing. We can actually see the amount of penumbra on an x-ray image. Um, it's something we could, if we had a little ruler, we could measure it. And it's an amount of blurriness at the edges of the image that's being x-rayed. And so uh, the way that we calculate this is we need that focal spot size. So here's that focal spot. We're going to take the actual geometrical size of the focal spot, which will be pretty small normally, like uh, half a millimeter. We'll multiply it times the OID, and we're going to divide all of that by the SOD. And this will give us a very small number, right? Um, that is the amount of blur there at the edges of the image. So hopefully this was helpful. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to post another video in which we work some of these uh, problems and we see how they apply to everyday life. Um, but thank you so much.